Thank you to Chef for their generous donation as a YouTube member. Hello everyone, my name is Decalink the Trained Unprofessional. The next day, Amicus wakes me up by gently shaking my shoulder. Hey. Hey William, wake up. I roll over on my sofa, groggily pulling the blanket up around me as I shiver. Ugh, it's so cold in here. Oh, I can turn up the heat if you'd like. It's just that I tend to sweat a little when it's too warm. Could you just could just give me a better blanket? Of course. I'm in just my underwear. My Romanesque underwear. Last night, Amicus had shown me a bit awkwardly how to tie it on. While it's uncomfortable, it's always it always feels a little loose, and there's a constant worry that it's just gonna drop off at some point. Anyway, we should get going soon. Alex is probably already waiting for us. I rub the sleep from my eyes, drawing the blanket around myself a bit more tightly. For what? We're going to the island for a picnic! You wanted something to do, didn't you? Oh yeah, right. I get up and grab my new robe off the back of the sofa. Don't bother with a shower today, since we'll be swimming! Well, I will anyway. Amicus moves to the bathroom and pulls out a large glass bottle filled with a clear liquid. He pours it into a glass cap and notices me, notices me watching. Oh, would you like to try some? I suppose your species cares about dental hygiene, considering your teeth look alright. What is it? A wash that simply cleans the teeth, keeps the breath from becoming offensively odorous. He holds out the cap, and I take it from him as he just pours the liquid straight into his mouth. I sniff it, and though I expected a minty smell, it's floral instead. Is this all you use to clean your teeth? Emka swishes the liquid around in his mouth for a while, then spits it into the sink. It removes any surface level debris, but you can get a deeper cleaning from a drone at least once a week. I can show you that later too if you'd like. That kinda sounds terrifying. Maybe... Honestly, you're supposed to use this every morning, but I forgot yesterday and all the excitement that we had. I lift the liquid-filled cap into my mouth, and with just a little hesitation, I pour it in. The taste re reminds me of walking into a room that's just been sprayed with air freshener. Not exactly pleasant, but when I spit it into the sink, I notice bits of what I assume to be plaque floating down the drain, and my mouth does feel a lot more fresh. Guess it works. Amicus seems impatient, though, shifting his weight from one foot to the other. Ready, William? Uh, yeah, sure. Do you have bathing suits or something? Uh, like clothes for swimming? Amicus steps out of the room and into the main hallway as I follow him. At the same time, I finish tying on my robe, trying to make sure everything is correctly in, in place. No, we swim nude. But if you prefer to have something on, you could use your undergarments. I can't imagine that would be comfortable, but Alex does it. Just as he says the cat's name, I, see, I can see him standing in the hall, carrying a heavy-looking basket in both arms. <clears throat> Once he sees us, he smiles. Hello, Amicus. Hello, William. It's good to see you again. How are you this morning? I'm about to respond, but Amicus is already speaking. Good, good. You got all the food, Alex. Uh, yeah, though aren't you sure it's not against protocol that I took all of this? Well, it would be if I didn't approve it. Now let's go. Alex and I follow the excited wolf's swishing tail as we head toward the front archways, an area that I haven't been to before. Ahem. I hear a familiar grunt, and we all stop and turn around. Kato stands there watching us, stoic as always. Where might you three be off to? Uh, hello, Kato. Uh, going for a swim? A swim? I can't exactly tell what's going on behind that visor, but the tone of his voice doesn't seem all that enthusiastic. Amicus seems to sense it, too. Yes? A moment of silence goes by. You know you have combat training today, Amicus. Well, yes, but only for part of the day. We'll be back shortly after noon. Kato's face twitches, and I can sense the disapproval coming off of him in waves. Then he turns his head slightly in my direction. You're taking the pets? 
I quickly fixed my face into a middle-distance stare. Yes, I thought we could all use a little fresh air. Kato goes on staring for a moment, and I start to believe what Amicus said about Kato not having a good mood. Finally, the old wolf turns his attention back to Amicus. Well, I have some of my own duties to take care of this morning, but I expect you to be in the amphitheater by the eleventh hour. Do not be late. With that, he turns and stalks off down the hall before disappearing around a marble corner. Amicus lets out a breath. Ugh, I thought he was going to cancel our outing altogether. All right, let's go before anyone else tries to stop us. Amicus quickly turns toward the archways again and leads out into the warm morning air. You seem very eager, Amicus. Well, I haven't been swinging for weeks now, and I need a good exercise. As we walk, I notice Alex huffing and puffing, struggling with the basket, so I hold out my hand. Here, do you need help? Oh, I don't want to inconvenience you. I reach out and take the handle of the basket, and Alex doesn't resist as I pull it out of his paws. It's heavy, but not impossible to carry. I heft it in both my hands as we walk down the path towards the lake. Are you sure it's not too heavy? I'm fine, though I think someone else might be able to handle it a bit better than us, especially since I imagine it's mostly his food. Amicus's ears perk at my pointed statement. Oh, is it heavy? Amicus turns and yanks the basket from me, easily swinging it in one paw. Should have said something, though I'll have to give it back once we get to the shore. I'll be swimming to the island. I frown. Is it far? Well, of course you'll be taking the sightseer. What's that? Alex moves up to walk alongside me. You'll see. It's sort of a hovercraft for sightseeing, as the name implies. After a few minutes, we reach the shore where there's a small gazebo with various boats underneath it. There's also what sort of looks like a jet ski, and next to that is just a glass box with an open top. This is what Alex and Amicus walk up to, the wolf leaning over to the drop the picnic basket inside. Once he does that, he strips off his underwear and tosses it into the glass craft as well. I look away and notice Alex do the same, his ears down as he blushes furiously. Trying to ignore the wolf, I walk up to the strange little craft, noticing that there's an open space in the side of the box that allows us to get in. The floor is glass as well, and I can see the dirt and vegetation beneath uh, underneath us. Race you to the island! Amicus cheerfully waves at us before running into the lake. The wolf's bushy tail swooshing around over his naked butt. Uh, so inappropriate. Alex shakes his head and turns to the slanted glass panel attached to the side of the craft. Um, he touches it and several bright characters come to life on the screen. A few seconds later, our little glass craft levitates off the ground and starts to move over the water, albeit at a very slow pace. Wow, what is this thing? A sightseeing craft. Parental tech, so it's very safe and easy to navigate. I watch as we start to float over the slightly choppy water, Amicus already about 10 meters out in front of us. He's a pretty good swimmer. We're just slow. That's why he turned this into a race, because he knows we won't beat him, even if we're going at full speed. Sure enough, Amicus starts to widen the gap. I notice Alex's ears twitching about, uh, twitching about as he navigates our craft, looking left and right while avoiding looking at the water altogether. Do you not like swimming? Oh, I hate large bodies of water. It's a bit stressful coming out here, honestly, but the island is serene, and for the most part, it makes the trip worth it. Huh, felines are kind of like that on uh, my planet, too. I cringe inwardly as I almost reveal the name of my planet. It was, a, it was pretty blatant, but Alex goes on like he didn't even notice. Well, yes, similar origins and all, but honestly, I'm a bit surprised that you're doing so well yourself, or that you even decided to come out here. Comes off as a little strange to me, but I'm distracted watching Amicus get closer to the island. Maybe only about 50 meters now. I start to get an idea, though. Judging by the distance between us, Amicus, and the island, I feel like I might be able to beat him. I grin, then start stripping off my robe. What are you doing? We're not at the island yet! 
Alex blushes furiously again, looking away. I'm gonna beat him. What? I grab onto the edge of the glass barrier and swing my legs over it. No! Alex actually tries to lunge for me, his paws just barely missing as I plunge into the lake. Oh lordy! I don't have much time to think about why, because I'm instantly surrounded by freezing cold water! I come up gas gasping from the shock of it before I spot the direction of the island and start swimming towards it. It's been a while since I've really had a chance to swim. I'd always been pretty good at it though, and soon enough I get to the familiar motions of putting one arm ahead of the other and while well, turning my head to take breaths. While this is going on, I can hear I still hear Alex shouting behind me. But then, just as I'm feeling that I'm about to gain on Amicus, I get rammed by something heavy and furry that suddenly starts to pull me into its grasp. At first, I wonder if I've been captured by some kind of Adastrian sea monster. Maybe that's why Alex is freaking out. But just as I'm about to resign myself to that fate... William! Don't worry, I've got you! I stop fighting against the big furry arms wrapping around me as I feel Amicus kicking his legs under mine, sort of pulling me towards the island that's just a few dozen meters away now. But what are you doing? I try to pull away, but Amicus keeps me in a fierce death grip, refusing to loosen up at all. By Galen! I look up and see Alexius dumping out the basket full of food into the sights here before throwing the basket at me. Use this! It'll keep you above water! He hits me in the face before gently bobbing away in the waves. What the hell is going on? I try to pull away from Amicus one last time, but give up, leaning into his chest with a bewildered expression on my face. He kicks his feet awkwardly under mine before I, fe I finally feel our feet dragged to the shifting sand under the water. Even then, Amicus doesn't let me go. He keeps his firm grip around my wrist as he pulls me to shore, bringing us onto the little island. Are you alright? Amicus puts his paws under my shoulders, his wide eyes looking into mine, breathing heavily. Yes! What the hell just happened? I rub my nose where the blanket hit me in the face, and that's when Alex's little craft pushes gently onto the sand. He hops out, running up to us. I don't know what happened, Amicus. He just jumped out. I'm sorry I couldn't stop him. Alex bows deeply, ears flat and trembling. I start to wonder if maybe there's something in the water that I wasn't supposed to come in contact with. I look at my skin, but everything seems fine. I finally look up at Amicus, trying to ignore his dick as it swings around between his legs. Amicus seems to notice the same at the same time and covers up his crotch with his paw, keeping the other on my shoulder. Can you just explain to me what happened? <laughs> Amicus frowns at me. Well, you can't swim. You're hopeless in water. That's why I wanted you in the craft. Alex's lips tremble a bit as if about to cry. You're not born with natural swimming abilities. Whenever a primate falls into the water, they're almost sure to drown. Are you sure you're okay? I, I'm so, so sorry. The way they explain to me how primates work reminds me that they still might not consider me to be on the same intelligence level as them. It's like I don't even know my own species. It's like I don't even don't know my own species capabilities, that I just jumped in because I'm a stupid barbarian. It irritates me, but both of them look almost traumatized. Especially Amicus. The paw not concealing his crotch is still firmly locked on my shoulder as if worried I'm about to go running off into the water again. Guys, I can swim. I mean, yeah, it's not natural for us, but we can learn. I've, I've known how to swim since I was a kid. They still stare back at me as if not understanding. Really? Um, yeah. Do you think I just jumped out of the thing to just drown myself? Amicus lets go of my shoulder to cover his dick with both paws now. I don't know. I know you're unhappy here, so I wasn't sure. I laugh. I'm not that unhappy. I'm fine. And you know, I'm not an idiot. I thought you'd know this by now, Amicus. Things go quiet then. Alex looking off to the side and his ears down, standing awkwardly covering his crotch with both paws. Why is Alex covering his crotch? So, did I ruin our outing? No, no. I just need to remember that you're not a typical child. Now, uh, let's try to relax and have some fun. It's the whole reason we came out here, after all. 
Alex still looks a bit dejected, looking off towards the sightseer. I ruined our food. I'm sorry. Alex bows again. I remember how Alex isn't really supposed to know about my intelligence or anything about me, really. But if he's not bothered by the conversation that just took place, he's not showing it. Or if he is bothered. Amicus shrugs. Stop bowing, it makes me feel strange. The naked wolf ambles over to the craft as he leans over to look at the cluttered mess inside. His tail lifts and we get the view of his butt again. Alex looks away, blushing, but at this point I think it's I've given up on trying not to see the various naked parts of the wolf. Being in the nude seems pretty natural for him, even if he tries to hide it from us. I think we can salvage a decent meal out of this. The wine's good. Emicus lifts a large bottle of wine into the air, still not turning around. I'll sort through it, Amicus. Please, enjoy your swimming exercises in the meantime. Alex quickly moves to start gathering up the food, head down. Well, alright. Ideas up, Alex. We're here to have fun. Alex puts his ears up, but doesn't lift his head to look at us. Oh, right. The wolf grins at me, dripping his muzzle down at his crotch. But cats are just like you when it comes to this sort of thing. Anyway, I'll get in the water so you won't have to keep averting your eyes. You should join me now that we know you can swim, William. I start to follow, then look, behind, look back at the cat. Uh, do you need help, Alex? Alex shakes his head quickly, and I can see that he's still blushing. <laughs> Go on and swim, William. I'll just be sunbathing anyway. There isn't much room in a sightseer for two people, and Amicus seems to be waiting for me, so I follow the wolf out towards the water. Intelligent conversation and a swimming partner. I have a pet that can do it all. Amicus shoulders me as we walk along the beach, making me stumble. Hey. I say it warningly, even though I know he's joking. You know, I have to wonder why you'd take me out here if you didn't think I could swim. Everyone enjoys the beach whether they can swim or not. The sand becomes too hot as I walk along the beach, so I have to jog at least ten meters or so onto the wet sand, sighing as a wave of co a wave cools my burning feet. Amicus catches up. Too hot? I suppose I should remember that you are a bit more fragile than the other species. Fragile? Well, a bit. I mean, when we fought on the ship, I had to hold back a lot. I give Amicus a shove, the wolf stumbling more than he probably would if would have if he wasn't covering up his junk. Whoa, hey! With that, I wade out into the shallows, the water quickly coming up to my shoulders. I stick to the shore, treading water as I watch Amicus splash around, doing the sort of lunging swim that reminds me of the butterfly stroke, which is a lot more clumsy. After a few minutes, he swims up next to me. You doing all right? I'm still unsure of you being out in the water. Hey, don't start. I know what I'm doing. All right, all right. But even experienced swimmers can have accidents, so let me know if you need help, or anything. Amicus stands right in front of me, his fur plastered tightly against his chest. I will. The wolf shields his eyes from the sun with a paw as he looks around. Anyway, do you want to have a race around the island? We can stay in the shallows. I actually used to do it with Cass all the time as a pup. I look around the small island, deciding that the distance is short enough that I can manage it. Alright, sure. Alright, William, but be warned. I won't go easy on you just because you're a primate. I swim past Amicus. Go! Hey! <laughs> I hear the wolf splashing noisily behind me as he tries to catch up. I do fairly well for the first half of our little race, managing to get around the back side of the island without the wolf catching up to me. I notice that this part of the island is covered in dense trees and vegetation with no beach to speak of. It's at this point that Amicus overtakes me with his big, lunging strokes, breathing hard each time he comes up. I realize how hard he's trying, and I wonder if he's actually afraid of losing. It's clear that there's a competitive edge to him, and I guess that makes sense if he's so determined to beat Cassius to the throne. As we come around the final bend, I fall further behind, quickly losing stamina as my muscles burn in my, in my arms and legs. Amicus seems to notice and slows a bit down a bit at the end, allowing me to catch up some before he reaches the same spot we'd started at. 
For a moment, we both just gasp for breath in the shallows, though Amix grins. <laughs> I, I win. <laughs> I roll my eyes and wait until I can breathe evenly again. Whatever, you've got way more muscle than I do. That isn't, isn't really an advantage. Amicus still breathes heavily, and I wonder how much effort he actually put into beating me. Besides, I've got all this fur weighing me down, and you don't. But you know, you know, competitive swimmers usually shave their fur down near the skin. It makes me wonder what a shaved wolf would look like. I guess I just have bad stamina. Actually, you did a lot better than I thought you would. Had me worried the first few minutes. Which, would you, what do you call that swimming style? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just called freestyle. Amicus moves closer, his breathing finally under control. Could you teach me? To swim? Looks like you've already got that down. I mean, your style of swimming. You beat me, didn't you? Why would you want to learn my style? I say that, but I think I know what Amicus is getting at. He has a very clumsy way of swimming, sort of like he's fighting the water itself. Amicus harumphs, blowing some droplets of water from his nose. It looked effective. I'd just like to try it if you're willing to show me. I smile. Alright. For the next hour, I show the wolf how to swim freestyle. At the, be at the beginning, it kind of feels like I'm teaching a toddler how to swim. First few tries that I'm thrashing around in the water like he's about to drown, showering me with the lake water until I have to reach out and grab him to make him stop. I tried to try with the arms first, standing in the shallows and showing him how I put one arm ahead of the other in a sort of rhythm. Again, I have to stand close to the naked wolf, grabbing his big furry arms and showing him how to move them. Once he has that down, he quickly learns how to add his feet to the mix, and pretty soon he's swimming back and forth, picking up speed to the point that I have no hope of keeping up with him. I realize then that Amicus is a very fast learner. <laughs> this is so much better! Do you know any other styles? Amicus paddles happily around me. Well, I guess back floating, but well, not really. I'm not a professional swimmer. Amicus stands, water running down his furry body. Want to race again? He grins at me. I laugh. No, I'm exhausted after teaching you all that. Oh, don't be such a pup. Or are you afraid of losing again? Amicus winks to lighten his words. I think about flicking him on the nose like he's a misbehaving dog, but I resist the urge. Oh, I'm tired, and I'm hungry, and if I stay out any longer, I'm probably going to get a sunburn. Reminding Ambicus that there's food on the beach seems to change his mind as he follows me under the shallows. Oh, that's right. You have no fur. Sometimes I get burned around my nose if I stay out too long. Are you all right? I feel Ambicus rub a paw over my shoulders and I shiver. Oh, well, no by tonight, but I feel all right. As we trudge under the beach, I see Alex curled up on a blanket, his fur bright and shiny under the sun. Judging by the plates around him, he's already eaten. Amicus chuckles. Such a feline. Anyway, you better keep your eyes off of me. I want, to, I want the fur to dry before I put my undergarments back on, so I'm going to stop covering up for you. Oh boy. Automatically my eyes start wandering around the wolf before snapping back to look straight ahead. But then I start to think. I am going to be here for a while, as far as I know. Maybe I should get used to the whole nudity thing now. Everyone's saying when in Rome because y'all a bunch of thirsty bitches, so... BAP! When in Rome. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, and if this is a normal thing for the wolves, then why not get used to it? So, I look. Oh! Amicus grunts in surprise when he sees me not bothering to avoid looking his way. But, but human Amicus's paws snap to covering his crotch again. I smirk. What? I might as well get used to it if this is normal around here, right? Though I gotta say, you're acting like it isn't. Emkis pauses, then pulls his paws away from his crotch, his face flushed. You just surprised me is all! Anyway... Emkis walks stiffly up, to the be up the beach, past the sleeping Alex while I try to keep up. It's kind of satisfying to see how embarrassed he is considering how much he's been teasing me about it. And honestly, now that I've seen it, it really isn't a big deal at all. 
The wolf's cork and walls are just like a human's. Sure, maybe with a little more fur on the walls and a darker shade on the cork, but still similar. We reach the sights here, and I see that Alex has laid out the food in, neat little, in a neat little line of plates. Though some of the pastries look a bit squashed, everything seems to have survived the emergency dumping that they suffered. Amicus grabs a few large plates of quiches and what look like fruit pastries. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I grab a folded blanket, the bottle of wine for Amicus, and a smaller bottle of the vegetable tasting juice I had had yesterday for myself. We make our way over to the shade of, of to the shade of the trees before I roll out the out the blanket, and Amicus starts to tie his underwear back on. Finally, he sits down with a huff before reaching out for the wine. You sure you don't want any? He asks before guzzling some of it down. Uh, I mean, maybe at dinner or something, but I'd rather not get buzzed right now. And really, I'd have to drink quite a bit more than this bottle to become inebriated. Guess that explains how we can drink so much of it for every meal. Well, you are a lot bigger. Anyway, this stuff is great. Yeah, I easily pull out the cork of my own bottle before drinking down the ice-cold juice. Amicus pulls a face. Ugh, ver ver verdi, that stuff tastes awful. Wine is so much better. Amicus immediately goes for the fruit pastries, shoving two in his mouth at the same time. Maybe you just prefer sweet things. And slow down, don't you take time to enjoy your food? Amicus frowns at me with his mouth full. I do enjoy it. That's why I eat it fast. I smile and go after one of the quiches instead. We eat in silence for a few minutes, then I remember what Cato had said earlier. When do you need to be at the th thing that Cato was talking about? Combat practice? Well, we've got at least an hour yet. And what does that involve? Oh, just striking and grapples. I'm just glad Cass isn't here to join us. I hate sparring him. Really? You told me last night he can't even compete with you. That's exactly why. He has a condition where his bones are less dense than what is normal. Makes them easy to break. Because of this, I'm more of a training dummy for him than anything. Basically, he just uses it as an excuse to punch me in the stomach! There isn't much I can do to retaliate that won't seriously injure him, so I prefer training with Kato. Didn't you tell Cassius you'd punch him yesterday? Amicus laughs. <laughs> and I did, didn't I? Well, that's why he was so offended. For now he knows not to bother you. I've learned to be gentle with him since we were pups. But my limits can only be pushed so far. Especially now that I have you. You said that you used to get along with him when you were pups? Yes, but I think that had more to do with him admiring me when we were younger. He used to look up to me, which was preferable to how he is now. What happened? Amicus shrugs. We grew older. Then Mother died, and he was always very close to her. They shared a lot in common, including their disease. Amicus pokes around the pastries a bit before picking one up that looks to be filled with a red fruit. Then I suppose we've always been different philosophically. Which would be fine if he weren't trying to take the throne from me. So if you were next in line for the throne, how could Cassius just challenge you for it? Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Is that how it's supposed to work? No, not really. Cato is the one who decided to do things this way. Which he can, which he can because he's the acting emperor. Cassius has been building a following amongst the wolves for the past several years. Amicus shakes his head. I thought he was simply trying to solidify his chances of becoming my advisor, but his speeches and writings were so different from my father's. I did realize he was cultivating a certain persona for the Emperorship eventually, but I never thought Cato would buy into it just because of Cassius' popularity. But he did, and here we are. Amicus shoes away a worryingly large fly that lands near the plate. I thought I'd have more time, anyway. A lot more time. But my father's passing was sudden, so I'm left with what I have now. What happened to him, if you don't mind me asking? To father? His ship crashed while landing in Adastra City about five months ago. 
It's a rare thing to happen, but it does happen. I'm sorry. Well, he's with the parents now, so we'll see him again. But he should have had so much more time left. Just like Mother. How old was he? 157. I blink. He was 157. Yes. Years? Yes. Amicus looks at me confused. How, how long do you people live? Uh, it varies, obviously, but about 250 to 300 years. Wow. How long do your people live? Amicus, look, Amicus looks slightly apprehensive. I don't know. 80? 100 if we're lucky. Oh. Amicus's ears fall. That's so short. Compared to you guys, yeah. Wait, how old are you? 20. How old are you? Amicus is still frowning. 23. They give me some pause, trying to work out how much that would be in a human lifespan. Wait, so are you an adult, or...? Amicus seems to recover. Well, adulthood varies from um, varies among species and cultures, obviously, but legal adulthood is 20, so yes, I'm considered an adult. Huh. About the same as humans. But the difference is that you die a lot sooner. That concerned look again. A shrug. Yeah, I've grown up with the idea, so it's not all that shocking to me. Amicus seems to be thinking. Well, maybe we can do something about it. I don't like the idea of you being through a fourth of your life when you've only just reached adulthood. I frown. Well, what are you going to do about it? We, w we aren't able to live so long naturally. We take supplements and medication that slows the aging process. Maybe we could consider the same for you. It's an interesting thought, but I don't like the idea of being a guinea pig for wolvish medication. Uh, maybe, but let's figure out this whole emperor thing first. Alright. Amicus picks at his claws for a while, and it looks like he wants to say something, but he doesn't, and just stays quiet. Finally, just as I'm about to ask him what's wrong, he looks over at the sleeping Alex. I'll be right back. And with that, the wolf suddenly gets up and jogs over to the cat. Can't help but feel the conversation was left unfinished. But then I see Amicus get down on his paws and knees as if sneaking up to Alex. I frown and watch as the wolf gets closer, his paw reaching out for Alex's earring. I guess the wolf wasn't being very quiet because Alex suddenly rolls over and squeals as the wolf leaps at him. Amicus, no! No, no, this is my best one! Don't mess it up! I sigh and get up. A little reluctant to leave the shade as I make my way over to the pair. Alex is rolled up into a little ball, clutching at his ear as he tries to hide the grapes. Don't you dare! Do you want to tear my ear off? I'm being gentle. If you'd stop trying to fight it, it would make this a lot easier. No! Alexius tries to roll away, then spots me. William, help! <laughs> I sigh and watch it for a bit before deciding to save the poor cat. I look for an opening, then pounce on Amicus's back, wrapping my arms around his neck and my legs around his waist, trying to throw him off balance. <laughs> oh, not so fragile now, are we? Amicus swings me back and forth as if trying to throw me off, but not really putting any effort into it. Meanwhile, Alex scrambles out from under the wolf before turning and giving him a shove. Ugh! Amicus starts to topple backwards, and for a moment I think I'm about to get crushed between his 300 between the 300-pound wolf and the sand, but Amicus turns as we fall and end up laying sideways on the beach. Alex stands to the side, quickly dusting himself off before adjusting his earring, frowning. You know, I might as well just stop wearing this thing. There's no point if half of it is plucked by the day's end. Amicus just lays there and laughs. His laugh is infectious, so I laugh too. They're too good, Alex. Maybe you should start wearing in inedible, inedible berries instead. Alex huffs as he looks down, at his, down his nose at us. 
It's a cultural staple of my people, and honestly, what you're doing is rather disrespectful, especially as a prospective emperor. Amicus waves his paw dismissively, laying flat out on his back next to me, his arm flopping over my head. Paw, you are a friend. Obviously, I wouldn't do it to an actual ambassador. I am an actual ambassador, Amicus. Yes, but a friend ambassador. Alex sighs. Anyway, thank you, William. You should obey your master, yes, but it's also important to keep your master in check when he oversteps his bounds. Hey, don't encourage insubordination, Alex. Amicus's big paw resting above my head comes down to ruffle my hair. I realize that for the first time since I, w I was abducted that I'm at ease. Happy, even. Then Alex looks at the sky. Amicus, what time is it? Amicus suddenly sits up with a grunt, also looking toward the sun. I don't know. Is it close to the eleventh hour? I was asleep, so I'm not sure. I'd ask calm, but we're outside his boundaries. Amicus sits for a moment, then sighs. Well, I suppose we should head off just in case. We gather up the food and blankets. Don't you guys have portable clocks or something? Amicus shrugs. We do, but usually I just ask calm. The wolf taps his ear. But like Alex said, his signal doesn't reach the island. Amicus is starting to look a little nervous, so we pick up the pace and pack ourselves into the sights here, a bit more crowded now with Amicus inside. When we're about halfway to the shore, Amicus asks, asks the time, then groans. Damn it, half past the eleventh hour.